This slideshow will cover Darwinian evolution, it's unit 11. Objectives 6b and c are covered here. 6b is to describe the contributions of different scientists to evolutionary theory. And then we're going to look at the scientific theories that contributed to Darwin's theory of evolution. The evolutionary scientists that we're going to talk about in this unit are Charles Darwin, who devised the theory of evolution and published it in Origin of the Species, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, whose theory was that acquired characteristics can be passed to offspring. His theories were later disproved, but they helped form some building blocks for Darwin. Charles Lyell came up with the principle of uniformitarianism. Malthus had some theories on human population growth. And then finally, Alfred Wallace. Um, he actually came up with a theory of evolution that was very similar to Darwin's, and we'll discuss why that was important. First up, we have Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. So he had two principles. He had the law of use and disuse and the inheritance of acquired characteristics. So basically, he said that if an organism used a specific part of its body more often, that it would become bigger or stronger, and that that characteristic could be passed on to its offspring. For example, if a water bird fed in water that continually got deeper and deeper and deeper, that the bird could grow longer legs, in which case those longer legs could be passed on to its offspring. Um, now we can see why this theory was disproven, because under inheritance of acquired characteristics, uh, one of those acquired characteristics would be something that the animal didn't have control over. So for example, a dog who had its ears clipped, um, and that would be like a pit bull today, um, could pass the clipped ears or the shorter ears onto its offspring, and we know that that is not true. This is the most famous uh, rendition of Lamarck's theory, and that is the giraffe. So originally the ancestors of giraffes, according to Lamarck, had short necks, but because they kept stretching to reach higher leaves on trees, their necks eventually grew longer and their offspring inherited that characteristic. So the reason that his theories were disproven was because um, of these types of questions. So if organisms strive to become more complex, why do we still have simple organisms? And then something like bacteria, so why didn't bacteria evolve into larger and more complex organisms if the idea is that all organisms want to be more complex and grow bigger and grow stronger so that they can survive? Next up, we have Thomas Malthus, and his ideas were about the struggle for existence. Um, in the 1700s, uh, we had the Industrial Revolution, and the higher birth rates and limited resources resulted in more competition. So he equated competition in the wild to competition among humans for resources. So this is where Darwin got the idea for survival of the fittest. This is one of those contributing ideas. Um, Thomas Malthus said every species struggles for food, living space, and mates. And his idea was that population size would be limited by resources. So because of a lack of food, a lack of a living space, and a lack of reproduction, that organisms would start to die off. Next up, we have Charles Lyell. His book was The Principles of Geology, and his idea was uniformitarianism. So his ideas basically were that the Earth was much, much older than previously thought, and that it took much longer to shape the Earth than what scholars originally uh, hypothesized. His ideas gave Darwin the reinforcement that Earth was much, much older than a few thousand years. And so this allowed him to 
really expand on his idea of change over time because the ideas that Darwin was having about change over time were had to have happened over a much longer period than a couple thousand years. And here is Darwin. He published the theory of evolution in The Origin of Species. He proposed descent from common ancestors and natural selection. Natural selection basically states that an organism that's better suited to its environment will survive and reproduce and that useful variations are inherited. So any variations in the genes that allow that organism to survive and reproduce better than its competition will pass those beneficial traits on to its offspring and could possibly create a new species. So this is a breakdown of how those scientists contributed to Darwin's research. Again, we have Lyell whose idea was that Earth was much, much older than we previously thought. That reinforced change over time. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, he first proposed the idea of evolution, which is change over time. Thomas Malthus, his ideas about human populations influenced Darwin's ideas on population pressures of other organisms. And then finally, Alfred Wallace. Uh, after Charles Darwin first started his research, he sat on it for a long, long time. Um, he wanted to really refine it, but he was also very hesitant because he was a religious person and he was worried about how it was going to be received. Um, but when he found out that Alfred Wallace was set to uh, publish his theory about evolution, he went ahead and published his. So he was basically just trying to get the jump on the other guy. So let's take a look at what Darwin did. He set sail on Her Majesty's ship, the Beagle. Uh, he was a naturalist, and he made many observations about plant and animal life on his journey. You can see in the background there, you can kind of see the, the map of his travels. So he started in Europe, went around South America to the Galapagos Islands, which is his most famous stop, traveled to New Zealand, Australia, briefly in Africa, and then back to England. He collected a lot of live specimens. He had a lot of preserved specimens, and he got lots of fossils as well. These are just a couple of Darwin's observations. Uh, one thing he noticed on different continents was that there were different but ecologically similar animal species inhabiting similar habitats around the globe. What that means is that on different continents, he saw different species of birds, for example, that were similar, but still very different. Um, they were large flightless birds. So for example, in the Southern Hemisphere, there are emus, there are ostriches. There's a bird in South America called the rhea. Um, they're large flightless birds. They are very similar, but they're also very different because of their different habitats. He also noted that there were different but related species occupying different habitats within a specific area. And this references the tortoises on the Galapagos Islands. You can see in that picture on the bottom, there are three different types of tortoises in the Galapagos. They're related, but they're still very different in their body shape, and that specifically refers to their necks. Darwin also collected a lot of fossils. Uh, he was in South America right after an earthquake, and the earthquake caused a fissure in the earth, and it revealed a lot of fossils in a lot of different layers. So Darwin really had a good grasp of descent with modification, and that just means that organisms changed gradually over long periods of time, which led to the evolution of new species. This contributed to his idea of the tree of life, and you can see his drawing down there at the bottom. So he thought that the originator of all life on Earth was one type of organism, and then this boom of life or this gradual evolution contributed to the different branches on that tree. He also noted that many fossils of extinct animals were very similar to living species. Uh, 
you can see at the bottom we have an armadillo. We all know what that is. And then the other animal is a glyptodont. And that is thought to be an ancestor of the armadillo. You can see it's very similar um, in the dome of its shell. Um, it looks almost more like a beaver than an armadillo. But the similarity between those two organisms that Darwin saw was another contributing factor. So the fossils also had a good impact on his ideas.